Hello friends, welcome to my space. So in today's video, we shall be looking at the linear inequalities. Linear inequalities, we are often familiar with the use of the equality sign. So many problems we solve, we make use of equality. But in this case, we are looking at linear inequalities. For a start, let us define the word inequality. Inequality. What inequality simply means the word inequality is a statement that two or more quantities are not equal. A statement that two or more quantities are not equal. In terms of equality, we could say pi is equal to two plus three. You can see two plus three is five, so five is equal to five. But in inequality, we say it is a statement. A statement that two or more quantities, two or more quantities are not equal. That's what it means when we say inequality. They are not equal to each other. Now, in inequality, it is vital for us to take note. We have various signs we use in inequality. The first one, we have a sign like this. This we call greater than. Greater than. We have a second, which we call the less than. We have the greater than or equal to. This is called greater greater than or equal to. You can see, you can see this sign, greater than or equal to. Then we also have less than or equal to. This is less than or equal to. Now in inequality, these are what we shall be using. We call them symbols, all of which are known as symbols. Symbols used in inequality. Normally, while we are growing up, we used to do our hand like this greater than, less than. So you can see on the board greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to. In inequality calculations, in problems that involve inequality, these are the signs that you will always encounter. So that is for that. So we shall be looking at some aspects in inequalities. One of it is what we call representation. We have the representation of on a normal line. On a number line. How do we represent inequalities on normal line? The first one we have, let's take some examples. Let's take some examples. For example, the first one we have x to be greater than minus 5. x to be greater than minus 5. Now, in handling situations like this, I'm going to draw my normal line. My normal line begins from the middle, which I call 0. Moving to the right-hand side, we have the positive numbers. Moving to the left-hand side, we have negative numbers. And that is where minus 5 falls. So minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. You can see minus 5. Now, we are saying x is greater than minus 5. That is to say, in the number line, I'm going to represent it here. Numbers that are greater than minus 5 will fall around here at minus 5. And since it's greater than, it means that we have to move to the right hand side. I have my circle, and then I move to the right hand side. What it simply means is that every number on the right hand side is greater than minus five. So I'm moving on the right hand side. And then take note, I'm using a circle, a small dot. Now the dot simply takes care of the greater than. And it simply means that the dot makes the boundary to be very strong. 
that means the value minus 5 is not included. So the boundary is very strong. Now we are moving on the side. So this is a simple number line that shows x to be greater than minus 5. Now let's take another one. Number 2, x is less than or equal to. x is less than or equal to 3. Let's draw a number line for this. We have our normal line system, middle zero, moving to the right, positive one, two, three, four. On the left, we have minus one, minus two, minus three. Now, x is less than or equal to my or, or equal to three. Now look at my number three here. It means I'm going to draw my number line this time around. I'm using a dotted line. You can see it is different from the first instance. I'm using a dotted line. It is less than, less than or equal to 3. That means numbers on the left hand side will all be less than or equal to 3. So my arrow moves to the left hand side. So this is a representation of x less than or equal to 3. Now take note in this case, the boundary is weak. The boundary is weak. That means the value 3 is included. Why? Because I have an equality sign here. So the boundary is a weak boundary. The boundary is a strong boundary because minus 5 is not included. So this is how we draw it. So each time we have an equality sign attached to either a greater or less than, we, we, make, we make use of the dotted line. But each time we have just either a greater or less than, we make use of an empty circle. Now a third example. Let's take one more example to explain that. For example, we have x to be greater than or equal to, or equal to minus 1, Okay, in this case, let's draw a normal line. We have our midpoint zero, moving to the right, one, two, three, on the left, minus one, minus two, minus three. Our sole interest is the minus one. So I'm going to rule my line just like this, the dots. Now I'm going to, you see, greater than equal to. That means I'm going to be using a dotted line less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, using the dotted line, greater than or equal to minus 1. So my line will be moving to the right hand side. So it's going to be towards this direction. Now this gives us the, the value for x to be greater than or equal to minus 1. The examples keeps going on and on, but don't forget, whenever you have just a greater than or a less than, make use of an empty dot. Whenever you have a greater than equal to or a less than equal to, you make use of a dot, a black dot, a dot that has been painted just as you have it here. This is the simple secret. So in our next video, hopefully we shall be looking at linear inequalities involving one and two variables. Yeah, we shall be solving problems involving X and Y, and then we shall also be drawing these diagrams, and we will see how it goes. So thank you for watching this video. I'm sure you got something from it. See you in the next section. Bye for now.